as I mentioned in the last video, we have to think hard about microeconomics, not just in terms of whether it's right or not. I mean, obviously, it's right in certain things. I find microeconomics to be quite wonderful if I want to figure out how many apples to sell. The question is, is microeconomics useful when I'm thinking about labor markets, when I'm thinking about financial markets, when I'm thinking about interactions between markets, a whole bunch of things that are situations that was not what micro was developed to address. And to figure that out, I need to start by thinking a little bit more about the economy as a whole. Before I go there, I want to talk a little bit about the context within which we come up with this image of the economy as a whole. So I'm going to do something with the circular flow, but before I go there, I want to talk about this guy. John Maynard Keynes. He was a really interesting guy. Post-1980s in the US and elsewhere, it's kind of fashionable, easy to think of him as a left-wing guy. But he's kind of interesting. He had a book where he talks, for example, am I a liberal? And you have to remember that liberal in the United Kingdom usage of the word didn't mean left-winger or Marxist or radical. It meant, did, was I a liberal in the sense that I was for markets, trade, and the elite? And in that book, Keynes says, look, yes, I am a liberal. I know my class. I belong to the elite class. I'm a rich guy. I'm elite. If there is class warfare, I know which side I'm on. I'm on the side of my class. He's also one of the very few people outside of David Ricardo who, as an economist, actually made money on the stock market. Lots of us have studied things. Very few of us have actually made money. He actually made money that way. He was very elite. John Maynard Keynes, his dad, John Neville Keynes, was also an economist. You remember so many of you heard about that positive normative distinction? That was his dad. That distinction between an economics that describes the world as it is, positive, versus an economics that tells you what the world should look like, normative. And, you know, it's an interesting description because very often we confuse the two. We often think that when we look at the world, we want to say, well, the world should be efficient and rational. That's a normative call. That's not positive. That's not saying that's what the world looks like. That's just saying it would be so nice if the world looked like that, right? Keynes's dad was a very famous political economist. Keynes himself was very elite. He was a political economist as well. In his younger days, he was a member, for those of you who are interested in this kind of stuff, of Bloomsbury. He used to hang out with Virginia Woolf, Leonard Woolf. Uh, he was part of this radical group and then very famously he broke with them. And he broke with them early on by joining the Bank of England. He used to head the India desk. So Keynes's early work was actually by looking at how to manage finance. So his earliest books among his early works, Indian currency and finance. How, to, how do I manage money supply in India so that England benefits? He was very clear about it. He was British, he was elite, that's what he wanted to do, nothing left wing about him, and he was very overt about it, very clear about it. So this guy is sitting there, he's elite, he's actually a central banker, not, not some kind of l radical left, he's actually broken with all his left friends. He's now in the central bank, he represents the government of England, and he's prolific and he's prominent. He wrote a book about uh, the Treaty of Versailles, and it was called the Economic Consequences.
of the Peace. It's a very famous book. And if he had written nothing else at all, he would be famous. Everybody read this book. In this book, The Economic Consequences of the Peace, he's coming from England and he actually breaks with a lot of his government. So this is after World War I. And he says the economic consequences of the peace, what's going to happen? And he predicts the rise of fascism in Germany. He says, look, we've just had a war. We've defeated Germany, World War I. And now that you've defeated them, you want to make them pay. You want them to pay you war reparations. You want them to pay you. And he's like, they're already dead. <laughs> they're already war torn. You force them to pay you, you will destroy an already destroyed economy. And they will be so angry, you will have generations of anger. So the economic consequences we have to worry about are not just the economic consequences of the war, it's the economic consequences of the peace. What you're doing when you force people who lost to you to pay you money. And, you know, it was a famous book, it was popular, it was read everywhere, and it proved to be prescient and right. He actually predicted what was going to happen. As I said, he's one of the few people who made money, he was prominent in the British government, he represented England, and after he wrote Economic Consequences of the Peace, he wrote a very interesting book, one of the most famous and important books you can imagine. It is the book that led to the entire field of macroeconomics as we know it today. I'm going to give you a minute. Let's see how many of you know what this book is. All right, here's the name of the book. The General Theory of Interest Employment and Money. Because what he was worried about was that coming out of World War I, we entered the Great Depression, especially in a context where the economic consequences of the peace, where you forced an already poor and war-torn economy to pay you money, had the consequences that he predicted. And he was really concerned about the Depression, not because he was left-wing, but because as he explained in Am I a Liberal, he's like, look, Russia is rising. Marxists are rising, working class rebellion is rising. If there is a radical revolution, I know which side I'm on. I am part of the elite class, but I'm also not a fool. My preference is to not have a revolution. And the only way to avoid a revolution is if we do something about exactly how bad things have got. Because if we allow things to get worse and worse, believe you me, there will be a revolution and we will lose. I don't want to lose the revolution. My aim is to save capitalism from the capitalists <laughs> because I really do not want to enter a radical socialist world. So let's start by remembering that macro was actually the reaction to a situation of crisis. Many of you looking around you might wonder if we are in a situation of crisis, but macro was the reaction to a situation of crisis, not from the left, but from the right or the moderate. There are left-wing responses. I will admit that you can learn those in IAS and from me, but that's not this class. Those of you who are interested in that, take another class with me. This class is macroeconomics, so we are going to learn about centrist right reactions to the instability that marks capitalism and the efforts by elite groups to figure out not how to fix the problem but at least how to manage it so it does not get out of control. And what Keynes does in the general theory is to say look that model we have about the markets clearing and no unemployment that's a wrong model. We all know this. We all know this. We can't keep, keep on pretending 
that that model is right because at this point actually we look stupid if we keep saying this what we need is a better model he doesn't mean left wing or right wing just in the positivist sense a model that is a better description of what's going on because if we can figure out what the problem is maybe we can address it and that's what this book is and this book even if he had never written this book just because of the economic consequences of the piece he would already be a superstar when he wrote this book he transformed an entire field and he was able to do this because he had so much credibility given a that he was among the few people who had actually worked to the point where he made money in stock markets which pretty much no other economists outside of david ricardo had i mean very few people had uh, and b because his predictions about what was going on had already proven right more than once and he had experience handling money supply for the british empire especially in the india desk so what you're going to learn for the rest of this class is this guy's legacy john maynard keynes i'm going to leave you with the idea that this might be a good moment to learn who this person is because if you are born after the thatcher or reagan era it's too easy for you to look at this and think this is the left the answer is this is actually the right to moderate learn who this is figure out who this is and then we're going to come back and learn his theory those of you who are interested in left wing stuff i can teach you that too not in this class and this is not the guy